In the previous video, we saw a general procedure for finding the diagonalization of a matrix A. And also we saw the mathematical explanation for why the procedure actually works. So in this video, we are going to give just two examples of how to apply the procedure in practice uh, and actually calculate two specific diagonalizations. Okay, so just to remind you, what does it mean to diagonalize a matrix? Well, to di diagonalize a matrix A means to find a matrix P, which is invertible, and a matrix D, which is diagonal, such that this equation here holds. Okay, so how do we actually calculate the matrix P and the matrix D? Well, the method tells us how. What we need to do is calculate n linearly independent eigenvectors. We need to find n linearly independent eigenvectors. By the way, if we can't find n linearly independent eigenvectors, then the matrix isn't diagonalizable, then we can't do this. Okay, so if it is, then we need to find n linearly independent eigenvectors, as well as their corresponding eigenvalues. And then the matrix P is just simply given like this and like this. Okay, so let's apply this method to two examples to see how this actually works here. And let's start with a very simple example, a two by two matrix. So what we need to do to apply the method is we need to first find um, the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues. So the first thing is to find n linearly independent eigenvectors. Uh, so we need to find the eigenvalues first, all right. So for the eigenvalues, we always appeal to the characteristic equation. So we look at um, the general form of the characteristic equation, which is this. And in our specific situation, uh, the matrix A is just given by this matrix 1, 2, 2, 1 here. And so we're just actually looking at, we're trying to solve for lambda, uh, where we are going to have here 1 minus lambda, uh, and then 2, and 2, and 1 minus lambda here. Okay, so for solve for lambda where this is 0. This is very easy because um, this is just going to be, uh, okay, to we need to calculate the determinant here, and so we multiply these two together and subtract that from this. And then uh, we're just going to get 1 minus lambda squared minus 4 equals 0. And so here we get 1 uh, minus lambda is equal to plus or minus uh, the square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, and this tells us exactly what uh, lambda is. Uh, we can have that lambda is equal to negative 1 or lambda is equal to 3. Okay, good. So... We have the eigenvalues, and now we can uh, use them to find out what are the eigenvectors. So for each of them, we need to calculate the corresponding eigenvector. So for lambda equal to 1 here, let's say lambda 1 is equal to negative 1, sorry. Then let's calculate what is the eigenvector. And to do that, we are solving for x, which is a generic 2 vector. We're trying to solve for what is this x which makes this equation here hold. Okay, that's, the, that's what it means to be an eigenvector. So we're trying to solve for the x here. Okay, so in our case, this just becomes exactly solving for x, y um, in this system of equations here. So lambda 1 is equal to negative 1. So we have negative 1 times x, y. And this just becomes uh, a linear system of equations. Well, as a matrix equation, this just becomes uh, x plus 2y. That's just multiplying the 1 by the x and the 2 by the y. Uh, plus, uh, and then in the second component, we have 2x plus y. And this has to just be equal to negative x, uh, negative y. Great. So this is nice because this tells us, uh, this just gives us a very simple linear system. Uh, and that linear system is, in the first component, we're going to have x plus 2y equals negative x. And then bringing the x over, we're just going to have 2x plus 2y equals 0. And then, okay, you're going to ask what happens in the second component. And in, in fact, exactly the same equation will come out. So actually, we're just getting one linear equation here. And this tells us that um, whatever, it tells us that x can be anything just as long as y is equal to negative x, because this equation here is the same thing as saying that uh, x is equal to negative y. Great, so that means that x can be anything, but y um, just as long as it's equal to negative y. So we can write our vector here, x 
var uh, is just equal to uh, some random variable times um, uh, one negative one. Okay, good. So that solves the, that gives us what is the eigen uh, vectors corresponding to, to lambda 1 equal to negative 1. And so by the way, this tells us that we can choose any one of these um, eigenvectors to be our x1. So we can just take the case when t is equal to 1. And so let's, let's keep that here. Let's say that our x1, we're going to choose this to be 1, negative 1. Fantastic. Okay, we still have uh, one more problem. We need to calculate the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda two, which is equal to three. That was the other eigenvalue of the mat matrix. Okay, so we're going to be doing this exact multiplication, the only thing here. Um, and so we're going to end up with this kind of matrix on the side. So we're going to be solving again for um, this uh, vector x, which is x, y. And how are we going to solve? Well, we're going to have that x plus 2y, 2x plus y. What is this? This is just this multiplication here, right? It's a times x. Good. So that must be equal to lambda 2 times x. And of course, lambda 2 is equal to 3. So we should be getting 3x here, 3y. OK, uh, fantastic. So this again is going to give us a linear system of equations, um, which I'm going to write now. So we have x plus 2y equals 3x, and 2x plus y equals 3y. Now bringing the, the y over and the x over gives us the same equation, you can check. It's just going to give us the equation that um, negative 2x uh, plus 2y equals zero, that's the first equation. Now the second equation is just going to give us um, 2x minus 2y equals zero. Okay, now these equations actually tell us the exact same thing. To solve this linear system, you can see um, x can be absolutely anything as long as it's equal to y, which is to say that um, our eigenvectors are going to be exactly all vectors of this form here. Okay, great. So. Um, we found all eigenvectors, and now again, we have a choice. We can choose what should our x2 be. We can find another vector, just as long as it's going to be, a linear, it's going to be linearly independent uh, together with x1. So um, let's take again t equal to 1, and here we get x2 is just equal to 1, 1. Okay, fantastic. So we have found the relevant data, we have found eigenvalues, we have found here uh, both eigenvalues of our matrix, and we've also find, found the two eigenvectors. And the question is, are they linearly independent? And the answer is yes. And why is the answer yes? Because uh, linear independence in two dimensions has a very simple uh, thing to understand, uh, simple interpretation. It just means that the vectors point in different directions. So if we draw, let's say, for instance, um, x1. So x1 has component 1 and then y component negative 1, so it, it looks like it's about here. And then x2 uh, points like this, right? So this one here is looking to be like x1, and this one here is to be x2. And they are linearly independent simply because they point in different directions. OK, great. So. To diagonalize our matrix, to finish this calculation off, let's just um, quickly go back to see how, um, well, let's just tabulate what we've got so far. So we have found that lambda 1 was equal to negative 1. And corresponding to this um, eigenvalue, we have um, this eigenvector. We chose our, our eigenvector to, to be um, uh, this one, 1, negative 1. And we also have lambda 2 equal to 3, and uh, we found the eigenvector x2, uh, which was going to be 1, 1. And we chose this one as well. OK, so the cool thing is, is that this is all we need to diagonalize our matrix. Because if we go back to our method, which I'll, I'll do right now, so going back to our general method, which is given up here, 
to diagonalize the matrix, we have to find n linearly independent eigenvectors. Great, we've done that. And we have to find n linearly independent, sorry, we have to just find the corresponding eigenvalues. And then the matrix P can be given like this, and the matrix D can be given like this. It's easy as that. So let's uh, go back and, and, and uh, complete the, the problem. So according to our method, the matrix P can be just given like this. It's x1, x2, which just means make the vector x1 the first column. So here we have 1, negative 1, and make the second vector uh, the second column. So we have this one here. And that's it. That's, uh, that's P. And now let's look at uh, D. What is D? Well, according to the method, D is the square matrix where we put lambda 1 here. Why lambda 1? Just because that's the corresponding eigenvalue for x1. And lambda 2 goes in the last component. Zero is everywhere else. That's the diagonal matrix. And so here, the nice thing is here is that this is just going to be um, negative 1, 3, and then 0, and 0. OK. So um, this is the diagonalization of our matrix, which means that if we had to compute the inverse of the matrix P, it has an inverse, by the way, because its rows are linear, its row vectors are linearly independent, or its column vectors are linearly independent. So if, if we had to compute this, um, we would get D. So this is the same thing as to say that uh, if I compute A times P, I should get the same thing as P times D. So I'm going to leave that for you to calculate, uh, and you can verify this. Um, but the, the point is this will be true, and uh, you can go ahead and, and do that. OK, let's move on to the last problem here. Um, let's uh, diagonalize a slightly more tricky example. OK, so this matrix, we're going to diagonalize this matrix here. Now, in a previous video, uh, we actually calculated the eigenvalues and the, the eigenvectors corresponding to this, this matrix here. Um, and the, uh, just to tell you, if we have to calculate what is the characteristic polynomial of this equation, sorry, of this uh, matrix here, it's going to be given by taking this determinant and setting it equal to um, 0. And here you can, you can see uh, just from the previous video that we're going to get lambda plus 1. And then here's the interesting thing, lambda plus 1 again. And then 2 minus lambda here. Um, and all of this is going to be uh, equal to uh, 0. So this tells us that the eigenvalues, uh, we have only two coming out of this uh, characteristic equation, namely lambda equal to negative 1 and uh, lambda equal to uh, 2. Great. Now, we also calculated eigenvectors, uh, so corresponding to lambda, uh, let's say 1 equal to negative 1. Um, you can check it in, th in that video, but uh, we, we, we checked um, the eigenvectors are all going to be given by x, which is going to be a generic uh, 3 vector. Not a generic 3 vector, but it's going to be a 3 vector, which is going to be of the form s times negative 1, 1, 0, plus t times negative 1, 0, 1. Okay? So the eigenvectors here are actually given by two free variables, OK? Um, and this is going to slightly enrich uh, our problem here. But in any case, uh, this is our eigen, um, the, uh, the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda 1 equal to negative 1 here. So um, from this, because we have two free variables here, we're going to be able to build two linearly independent vectors from the, this, uh, this one eigenvalue. And how are we going to do that? Well, let's take s equal to 1. So s equal to 1 gives us x1, let's say. s equal to 1 gives us uh, this. 
and then let's take t equal to zero, and then we just add the zero vector so that we can that this is definitely going to be an eigenvector. But also, we could have taken t equal to uh, one and s equal to zero, and get another eigenvector, which is just going to be given by okay. So if s is equal to zero, then then this uh, part here completely cancels out, and if t is equal to one, we just get this this vector here. So we just get negative one zero one. And so we have two um, eigenvectors corresponding to this uh, one eigenvalue here. Okay, good. Uh, and then also another thing was that uh, we have only one eigenvalue here, and it is lambda 2 equal to uh, 2. And the eigenvectors here are all just given by... Um, x equal to just one free variable now, this time, t times, uh, I think it's 1, 1, 1. OK, good. So that is uh, going to tell us that, again, we need to make a choice. We need, to, we need a one eigenvector uh, for this corresponding eigenvalue. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose, let's say, uh, x3 now. Uh, that must be equal to when we take t equal to 1, so we just get 1, 1, 1 here. Good. So to diagonalize, again, let's just let's tabulate for ourselves. We have here our um, x1. So we have here, this is x1. And corresponding to x1, we have the, lamb the eigenvalue lambda 1. Uh, which we said is equal to negative 1. Okay. Uh, and also we have uh, uh, x2, which is negative 1, 0, 1. And uh, we call this x2. And it has the same eigenvalue, but we're going to call that lambda 2. So they're both equal to negative 1. Good. And uh, here we're going to have um, the last eigenvector which we got which was x3 and um, lambda 3 was equal to 2 okay so um, importantly these three vectors are linearly independent and because our matrix is 3 by 3 we have found three linearly independent eigenvectors so our matrix is diagonalizable and the diagonalization will just be given exactly by p equal to you stack the columns together. That's what this is. So it's this matrix. Negative 1, 1, 0. Uh, then negative 1, 0, 1. And then uh, 1, 1, 1. So that's our matrix P. And our matrix D here is just going to be equal to um, the diagonal matrix formed by putting um, just the corresponding eigenvalues uh, along the main diagonal. So negative 1, negative 1, 2, zeros everywhere else. Nice. Okay, so then again, I, I leave it to you to calculate that if you, uh, if you want to find the inverse, then you should be taking uh, P times, uh, P inverse times A times P is equal to D. You should get this equation here. Okay, so I leave that to you, um, and um, that will be it for this video. Okay, thank you.